G'day and welcome back to the Musselro Wind Farm Project. 12 months into the project and we're here in mid-January lifting our first turbine. So you've all been watching the progress in bite-sized chunks, but just to recap, we've completed all the civil component of the job, all the in-ground services are in, the trans lines within a week of completion, the substations within a couple of weeks of completion, and uh, our last ship from Italy is arriving and we're starting to, we'll start unloading that. In late November last year, we finished the last foundation in B circuit. So the completion of the foundations, in summary, there was 6,000 cubic metres of blinding concrete, and then a further 29,000 cubic metres of concrete in the foundations, all fueled by 1,700 egg and bacon rolls, which fed the, the construction crews during that time. Now inside those foundations, there's a, a total of 3,600 tonnes of reinforcement steel, 7,000 odd anchor bolts, all totalling up to about 5,500 truckloads of concrete and steel delivery. So in total, we've had three shipments into, into Bell Bay with all the components for the turbines. The first shipment was, uh, was blades and uh, the second two shipments were blades, hubs and nacelles. And as you've seen from previous updates, there's been a lot of logistical issues to over overcome in the delivery of all these components to site. To have a break in the uh, in the routine of deliveries of all these components, we sent one blade off to Scottsdale just uh, to so the other locals in the area can see a, a blade close up and personal. These most of the components are delivered through the night, so not many people get to see them until they arrive at the site. But this was uh, a great opportunity for everybody to in the in the wider community to, to feel like they were involved in the project. <laughs> Very good. Cool. So as you can see behind me, we've, got, uh, we've started putting up the towers. So they're the base and mid sections. We've had a 500 ton crane on site since late November erecting these. And he'll continue doing that until uh, late January.
G'day, I'm Mark Jackson. I'm the Lead Electrical Engineering Commissioning Manager for the Musselroy Wind Farm Project and uh, I've got responsibility for the construction of the uh, electrical works on, for the project, which is the transmission line and the electrical reticulation in the substation on site. Works on the 48.6 kilometre long transmission line for the project are uh, nearing completion. Uh, all 154 poles have but were erected at the start of December and the stringing works, which uh, commenced in October, are also nearing completion with only 16 poles left to be done. We have had one final delay in the uh, stringing of the transmission line uh, due to the uh, bushfires which have occurred in the last week in southern Tasmania. However, uh, that will only result in about a week's delay and we should have the, uh, the transmission line finished within the next two weeks. Large sections of the transmission line stringing have been achieved through the use of a helicopter. This is a, quite an expensive uh, way of doing it, but it's actually a very time efficient way of doing it in the fact that the work can actually be completed a lot quicker, um, particularly in areas where uh, there's heavy woodland and there's a lot of deadfall on the ground and also through sections of the transmission line where there's a lot of turns within a short distance. Works for our connection point into the Trans End network um, are well underway. Uh, the works at the Trans End Derby substation were completed in November and the final works and final testing for those will be completed once the transmission line works have been done. Here on the wind farm, the electrical works are well and truly underway. The 110 kV yard is essentially completed. Our two 90 MVA transformers are in place, as you can see behind me. Uh, construction of those and the build-up of those was completed just prior to the Christmas break um, following their arrival in late, late November and early December. The other half of our switch yard is a 33 kilovolt yard and all the civil works in that area have now been complete. The plant being installed in the 33 kV yard uh, will be serving two purposes. First of all we have two synchronous condensers being installed which are essentially uh, large electric motors which have a uh, flywheel attached on the end of them. Uh, they are being installed due to the fact that we are hanging off uh, the weak end of the, of the Trans End network and we need to be able to protect our plant and equipment from uh, large system faults which uh, can have an effect and potentially damage our plant and potentially people as well here on site. The synchronous condensers arrived on site in mid-December and the build-up of those are in the process and should be completed in the next couple of weeks. The other equipment we have is for dynamic reactive support. Um, these is in the form of four dynamic reactive compensators as well as four capacitor banks um, and these are at varying stages of delivery and installation. At the heart of the high voltage installation for the site we have the switch room. This provides the link between our 110 kV equipment and our 33 kV equipment out here in the yard as well as providing a linkage through to the 56 wind turbines which are installed on site via nearly 60 kilometres of uh, underground high voltage cable. Installation of the underground cabling was completed in late November and the installation of the high voltage switch gear in the switch room itself uh, is complete along with most of its testing.
name's Philip Davis. I'm the site supervisor here on Muscle Rowing Farm. So the crane behind me here, as you can see, came from Western Australia. It is the, it's a 1,200 ton lever crane. It's the largest telescopic crawler crane in the world. And the reason it's here is because it is ideal for erecting wind turbines. And it's ideal for wind farms because you can move from one part of the site to the other without derigging in a short space of time. So today we have the 500 ton crane with the McNally's team setting up the 1200 ton crawler crane. So once we have the main crane, the 1200 ton crane assembled, we're going to track it down to D14 to assemble the first V90 turbine. The tricky bit starts when we want to get 80 tonnes of nacelle, 80 metres into the air. So there's a, a fairly unique crane that we've got, a 1200 tonne telescopic crane. So the wind hoist team who's providing that crane, their job is to put up the top section, the third section, put the nacelle and hub on and then the blades. But just in case the wind picks up, for whatever reason that the, the 1200 tonne crane can't complete that work, the 500 tonne crane is still capable of lifting blades. So whenever there's, there's uh, wind on the site, something will be happening, the cranes will be moving on, ready to start lifting the next day. The Muscle Row site's fairly unique with its the wind patterns, and we're trying to, to optimise our opportunities of lifting with these, these large cranes. So we've instigated a morning and evening shift in order to get the lull in the wind in the, in the early morning, and the same in the evening on the sunset. So with all that said, it's pretty satisfying to be standing here in the top of a, a midsection watching our first turbine being lifted 12 months after we started.